we could please get a we could please get a roll call. Sure. One second. Okay. Veronica Cordova. Here. Preston Elkins. Here. Rustin Self. Here. Deborah Stone. Here. And we, we do not have Chris Wood or Mike Miller. They were both uh, invited. And then Javier Machaca is here. It's Machuca, yes. Machuca, I'm sorry. Now you're hungry. I, I, <laughs> yes, it be. it's late in the day. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item of business is item number three, approval of minutes. They were in your packet. Does anybody have any questions on the previous month, the previous meetings minutes? There is none. What is the pleasure of the finance committee? You make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Self and a second by Ms. Stone. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item four, discussion items. Item A is the review of bills expense report for February, for February through April for recommendation to council from Javier Machuca, CPA consultant. That's so, oh, is that what, uh, did you get that to them? Uh, we weren't able to make a paper copy, but Christine's putting it up right now. Okay. Uh, so committee members, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I couldn't get it in earlier. I had a problem with my computer out here. So I did the whole reboot and the whole deal and it finally was able to, to get in. However, what I did was seeing those dates that you- Sorry, the one one transfer. My apologies. Mm. See if you could scroll up. No. I may have to send it to her again. I apologize. Do you want me to do it real quick? I think I have it open. Yeah, can you send it to Christine Javier? Or just share or can yes. you share it? Perfect. Yeah, let me look real quick. Let me get it. Oh, shoot. No, I can't. It's. I'm sorry. It's. It's on your computer, the Portales computer. I'm on my computer right now. Oh, okay. All right. Let me find it. I'll forward it to you, Christine. I was wondering why that didn't look the same. Yeah, I just didn't trust it anymore. So I got on mine for this meeting. Chris is saying he never got a Zoom invite. Can we send him a Zoom invite real quick? Is it too late? Uh, let me see if I can find it. <clears throat> Chris underscore Wood. I can send it to you real quick, Chief. Okay. All right. Thank you, Christine. Oh, not on the list. That's his email address. Chris underscore Wood. There he is, right here. Oh, it was the same stuff. That's the one that I just forwarded you. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we need to be on. The vendor payments. Okay. I know it's so loud when my email comes in. 
that look better, Javier? That's it. Just expand it a little bit. Um, you want it bigger, or smaller? Bigger, expand. Or do you oh, want no, I'm sorry. I thought, the, I thought the window would get bigger. Yeah. That's fine. Let's just start at the top. Okay. So, uh, members of the finance committee, what I did was I went through and on the dates that were uh, set up on the agenda, I ran a payments by vendor report out of uh, your EPRO. Uh, what do you guys call it? Encode. I'm sorry. Uh, I call it EPRO. You guys call it Encode. And so, what we did with this is we just go through and identify one the dates of the companies that got paid and of course uh the amount which is more important and if you look uh under vendor number you'll see a grand total there and it was easier to do a vendor number subtotal versus uh, a total by name due to the fact that the name is it varies in size and the subtotal is always going to be a four digit number so i went with that and if you scroll through it you can see that um there was more activity than I anticipated when I was looking at this. Um, you're getting more payments out, which makes sense because your APs is relatively low. Uh, you guys don't carry a lot of days on your accounts payable as some other entities do based on the fact that you have the cash to pay it and you don't have to uh, play with uh, the days outstanding as much as other others do. Uh, one of the things that I did notice is that uh, some of the payments that are being made uh, come in both, are going out both wire and uh, check, even though that's a fact, it seems like a, a lot of them are, are still check, and I think it's just more secure to go through the ACH route, and that would be something to consider in, in the future future, not immediate future. Uh, try to get everybody going through an ACH. It just it seems to be more efficient. Uh, the state went to that. Uh, they basically want you to be an ACH type vendor, and uh, it just alleviates a lot of the, the potential for fraud. So just you guys should be familiar with every one of these uh, vendors. Nothing came that's unusual. I think the new one was me um, when I was going through them to see, you know, the dates and uh, the dates versus the the number, the vendor number. And of course, the more, the higher the vendor number, the more, the newer the, the vendor is. So that, that might be one of the things that I would go through and look at to see whether or not you can identify some of the new vendors that are listed in your app. Uh, in your listing. Uh, another thing that I try to do is I try to find what you have received in the past. And I just, either I just don't have access to it or I just couldn't find it or it doesn't exist. So that was a question that I have written down right here is, what do you normally get when you see this type of report? Anyone? So we've never seen um, a vendor report prior to this. At least I have not in finance that I can recall. And everybody else on finance is fairly new. Well, um, I, are you talking about the, the expenses that we would look at? Because No, this is a, a vendor report. This is just to show you who's got paid what. No, normally we just well, get we usually we usually get a list of the monthly bills, but right. not a vendor report. Correct. And then okay. uh, so can I ask one question? And I'm sorry, because I was I was copying like what other uh entities look at when they're doing in your finance report and what I look at as a member of a the new send a, a supervisory committee. And what we do is we go through and we look for new vendors and, and then we look at the makeup of other vendors for two separate reasons. One is to see 
we want to make sure as those in charge of governance that we are able to identify new ones and, and we know what the contract's for. And then the second one is, of course, uh, our contract, our procurement rules. Uh, if somebody is out of, like for instance, let's say me, if all of a sudden I, I added up to $75,000, you would know something's wrong or you should know something's wrong because small purchases should be limited to $60,000 and less. So then uh, I think the finance committee should be able to see those things such as those and ask the appropriate questions from those in charge of finance. But that's, I thought that that's what you guys wanted to see. We do have a uh, an expense listing that I think that this makes more sense and maybe something for you to consider in the future. Yeah, I agree with you, Javier. I think this is a much better way to look at uh, the cash going out versus the expense. Um, can I ask on here the, it looked like we wrote a check to Eastern for $54,000. What would that be for? Can I ask what that would be? I What I could do is if, if you just give me a list, I can pull everything up. I don't have the operating uh, knowledge. Maybe uh, the fire chief does on why certain checks were cut. I'm just not that familiar with it yet. It was for a lodger's tax um, planning. It was what? A lodger's tax planning? That we, that they do every year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually it's for like the big concerts that they do, things of that nature that the lodger's tax supports. Lodger's tax is where it brings in uh, tourist communities to our home. To our community and then why would we pay ourselves mm -hmm. out of lodger's tax no it, there was a check it said um city of portales city of clothes and then city of portales right and then city clothes would be don't be there yeah well usually if there's a name up there like for example you know things it's usually like whenever we go out to training mm -hmm. We get reimbursed for the mileage. Yes, mm -hmm. and if we go in our personal, then we get reimbursed for the mileage. So if there's a field in there, um, then that's why we reimbursed. So, mm -hmm. that's strange. Okay. That was a ch check to yourselves because of yourselves. That's weird. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. I would just understand if we're writing you all checks, reimbursing you, but. Us writing a check to the city of Portales doesn't make sense for that. I don't. Believe. I can look into that one because you have my curiosity up on that. Like coded different? Is that what you're saying? No, I mean we wouldn't write a check for ourselves. Yeah, no, uh, the, it, the it'd be one of, thing if you're writing it. That say for city of Portales, it's usually for like the water meter fees, like the for those. If it's not the water meter fees, it's um the. The outgoing cash, it's it's like our cash refund that we like if we have like the account, reimbursement yes, for like a connection that, fee or so it goes back to city for them. Okay. Shouldn't it be made out to the homeowner though, whoever paid the <laughs> no. I'll look at that one. Um and I'll get back to you before this meeting's over. So let's. So another thing I wanted to point out is professional services. This is the way we track how much we're paying, or on the boards that I'm on and and entities that I work with. Uh, one of the things I always point out is uh, we try to track professional services, and this is an easier way for you to understand who's getting cut which checks. And I hate to be like this. But we always uh, keep an eye on uh, the attorney fees because sometimes uh, it's easy to get into a, a situation where you do require a lot of attorney fees, but then they blow up. And I, I had that happen on one entity where we, we weren't tracking the attorney fees correctly. 
and uh, because they were being distributed between funds. So that's we didn't pick him up in expenses. And then when I ran this, that's where it popped. And we were able to uh, then identify that we were having an issue with the small purchase agreement that we had put them into. And then on these, what I think what um, in the future, when you do get, when your new hire comes in, what I'll help her do is try to get this information out to you at least two days before the meeting. So you can go through them and then you can highlight what you make questions on. Can we scroll right back up a little bit, Christine? On the uh, SPS, I only see one, I'm assuming power bill of 27,000 bucks, but this is for multiple months, correct? This is February to April. When yes, we sir. Give those? Yeah. Wouldn't we see three of those, Javier? We for should, the, yes. You're right. Only if we were able to cut three checks. With the workload placed on AP, there's been times where we've had to cut one check for multiple months. So are we paying finance charges on those being late? No. There's no finance charges on those. <laughs> Good to know. I'm just and that twenty seven thousand that's so on our electric bills, we get multiple, multiple bills. Right. But on that twenty seven thousand, that one's a completely separate account. It's a it's labeled as the main main account mm -hmm. and it's for everything, like everything around here. The lights, the buildings, everything. Oh yeah, I wouldn't concern about the dollar amount. I'm just concerned that there's only one of them. So. Yeah. No, that's just that's just the one big bill. And then, yep. one. I think what he's yeah. stating is is it should have been like uh, two one or two fifteen three fifteen then four fifteen. Since we we ran it for three months starting on February first, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. No, yeah. that was one month. Yeah, no, but he ran the checks oh, for yeah. three months, so I'd have assumed we would have seen three power bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Imagine that the electric guy catching an electric bill, and it ain't to us. <laughs> yeah, I already saw our check, so that was good. Yeah. At any point y'all want her to stop? Just yell. Yeah, can we stop right there? What is Daniel Stevens and Associates? I idea? thought that was a lot. DDSA. Ah, okay, there we go. Okay. I haven't seen it through now. That's the engineering firm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, an engineering firm, okay. Yeah, I just never seen it written out. So um in the fees that I saw for US Bank, they're quite uh steep. So I'm sure that they probably have a component of ACH built into that um, that fee. So that may be something that we do look at to where we aren't writing as many checks and we can ACH some of these out if the um, the vendor accepts the ACH. That's something that we're working towards uh, previous employees did not want to go that route but I do think that's the wisest thing for us moving forward. Where did you see fees at? Well, I'm, I'm assuming it's fees because that could just be us paying the, the credit card bills, but do we carry a balance on those month to month at all? Good deal. Did you think it's a credit card? Some See, I thought the Wells Fargo were the yeah, credit cards. U.S. Bank is our is our credit card. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. and so that's all you see on that. Yeah. So those, in my opinion, those are the ones that are are should be looked at more in the finance department. Uh, at least when I audited cities, we always looked at all of the credit card statements to see what charges there were. So to me, that's a more uh, important thing to look at because we only see 
the total monthly charge. We don't see the individual charges. Yeah. So and we do pay that very true. every month. So that's something you're going to get added? The if we could, if that's something that we can get the detailed breakdown of what's being charged, because uh, I've seen auditing hourly motels and there's only a couple of hours. On it, so mm. we'd like to double check those a little bit better. If, I, I would like to think the department heads would I'm, I'm that with before, you. I'm with but, you. Yeah. Uh, we We've can, seen it though. We can work to try to provide that in the future. I, I think what a good solution for that is what I see is you won't necessarily get the the credit card statements. What you would get is a as they go through, they need to do a, a breakup of what accounts are being hit. Uh, for instance, what fund is being hit, then what expense accounts being hit by that credit card charge. So I've seen that being put into Excel, and then it has comments on the side. For instance. Uh, let's say it's it's for your elected uh, members that, that the one fund that you have, and they travel to Albuquerque for something. It would state mileage reimbursement for travel to Albuquerque, and then maybe the initials of the individual that was reimbursed, or right. that used it for some, you know, a hotel or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I've seen those before, and uh, that way you don't have to put out your credit card statement to the public and then it becomes an easier right, right, thing right. to look at. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And they have to comb through it in order to create the expense entry. So it's not like we're creating new work if if that was a, the, the route you chose to go through. If that was enough information, so I'm trying to say, I'm sorry. So was that all? So, so everybody, yes, sir. Do we have any other questions for Javier on the fund, the vendor fund, the vendor report? No, I don't. So what I'll do on this is I'll save it and I'll, uh, it's a direct, I just cleaned it up a little bit. It's just a report directly out of your, your system. And, and I will uh, include that on the notes that I'm, giving um, your new uh, treasurer. And then we'll have to go to council at the next next meeting on the 28th, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, with that, we'll move on to item B, uh, review of revenue report for April of 2024. Amid, you're still up. April so is that, sure. yeah, let it's, us pull that up. You know, do the, what you about? I don't see it up there. I forwarded it from Javier to you. Okay. I apologize for all the technical difficulties. That's it, and it's the one that you first opened up. The remember the GRT where we added it at the bottom? The far right one. Far right one? Yep. Okay. And, uh, there it is. In the middle. In the middle of this one? Yeah. Okay. Is that one correct, Javier? I, I can't see it yet. Okay. No, this looks like the one that I was working on for. That's not it. That's what I sent. Uh, you don't really need to look at that one. That's the uh, expense, the are you, deposit tie up. Are you wanting the entire revenue report? Have a revenue it report. Was the modified one I sent you? The, the one that we talked about where we added? This one? Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. So this and the, is, the way I know if it's it is if you go to the very bottom. So this is for the entire fiscal year. This isn't just for April. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes, I did do the. We were working on trying to get information together so we could uh, 
uh, have numbers as you requested uh, in the, our last meeting. And so what I did, of course, he, he did end up and this being a, the fire chief first ran this report and then I, I went with it and I worked on it. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we, we were trying to tie down our revenues through the year. And uh, this is basically through the, the date, which would be, I think, yesterday. But if you go to the bottom, there's a couple of things I want to explain. Okay. So what we did is we, unfortunately, I still am having issues with uh, how deposits are being recorded into your system. And uh, I've worked on that pretty much today. Um, and I think I have solved what the issue is with uh, the assistance of Emily from the utilities department. Anyhow, so what we did was we took the entire total and then we went through and we added in our notes, which are um, the GRT because May's GRT report is available as well. And then I added in items that I know are identifiable in your bank statement, which as you can see would be the opiates and things of that nature. Now, I do have a line item that says unrecorded revenue. And uh, let me explain that to you. This came from, um, you are receiving monies for the ambulance fees, which I think that's what it is. Uh, you seem to call it that. And what this is, is money that's directly wired into your bank account uh, from various uh, places of business. So it'd be like, one of them is B Blue Cross Blue Shield in Mexico. The other one's Presbyterian in Mexico. And then it's weird because you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, Illinois, um, several places such as that. And then you have self-pay that comes in the same way. Um, but it's not getting on your book. So I could actually say that it's not being recorded in your number now. And so what I have done in the past is I organize those through a pivot table and I just make one entry into your books for the month of April for Blue Cross Blue Shield New Mexico and it would be several uh, um, deposits from that entity and it would just be one number that's going to make it into your your uh, general ledger so that still has to be recorded I have ran into an issue where those are all my knowns I just can't figure out why we aren't recording something like now it's down to sixty thousand uh, dollars again it's a good thing because it's in the bank but it's not on your books so that's why um i didn't give you like straight off the system that's why we had to create this this reconciliation at the bottom to figure out where we're going to be at does that make sense to everybody yes sir And then I could uh, I could get you the information associated with the April numbers, but as I was talking to the fire chief this morning and yesterday, I just felt that we couldn't put it in the correct category until I figure out what the issue is with the deposits that we're having problems with. Of course, yesterday it was one hundred ninety-two thousand, and now, like I stated earlier, it's it's around sixty. Uh, Seven thousand dollars that we still haven't identified. Great work, Javier. Year to date, Javier. Yes, sir. Okay. And then what I did is at the bottom, I also included, I took all your gross receipts tax revenue for the last eleven months, and I estimated what you would receive in a in June, just to give you a number. You will have additional revenues, don't get me wrong, but just to give you an idea of where you would be if you include gross receipts tax, because that's one of the biggest uh, deposits that you make into your fund 101 to the general fund on a monthly basis. Do you have any other questions? 
not on it. Mm -hmm. Christine, before you go off of that. So the main reason that I wanted him to have that prepared for us so we knew where our starting point was. Uh, but there's a big factor that we've historically done that's not document documented on here as far as how our general fund is budget scroll down. Yeah, just to that main deal. Because historically, and I think I sent it to you, Christine, the 101 transfers in history. I think I emailed it, maybe. This one? Yes. No, no, no. Maybe not. Anyway, historically, we've taken a little over one, just under 1.3 million out of enterprise funds to supplement the general fund. So to know where we, our starting point is for this preliminary budget and our final budget, um, I added that into the a little over 12 million that he has estimated uh, to give us a rough idea, which puts us just under 13.5 million uh, as far as our starting point of the projected, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to the projected. Actually, let's go to the FY25 preliminary budget proposal. Is that item C? Item C? No. I don't know. Okay. It, it'll be in the extra papers I gave you. I think I did. You have a question? You didn't give rest in the those extras. Oh, some? yeah, they're right there. I think I was on the I was texting Chris when he was handing them out. Just, just go to the 101 general fund preliminary budget. So again, I'm the fire chief and this is all new to me. And I found out on Monday that I needed to have this prepared for you guys. Um, so what I did is I went and looked at, and with the mayor's guidance, I looked at every general fund line item and plugged in what we had for last year, except for the, let me find that, except for the capital outlay that we've been awarded. So in your packet, you'd have the detail versus budget report that you all saw. And then I took in and I added the expenditures for all the capital items that we've received uh, funding for or set to receive funding for. Um, the main changes. Uh, no, we should be okay. Uh, let me send you this one real quick. So again, the general fund is the one that is the most difficult to wrap your head around because there's a lot of moving parts. And then we have all the other various funds, the correction fund, EMS fund, uh, enhanced 911, fire protection fund, beautification. There's a ton that I just emailed her that she'll pull up in just a minute. Uh, but as far as the general fund, when we look at it, I included the increased expenditures uh, for the capital items. that are in a different line item than general fund. So our general fund is basically staying the same as far as the preliminary budget. I just cleaned it up and went to the next dollar amount. Um, go to the one that the top left, Christine, please, ma'am. This one? Yes, ma'am. So where it says prelim F25, you'll see the difference in elected officials. It went up 69 cents just to make it cleaner to easier for me to wrap my firefighter brain around, which gives us a total preliminary budget of $12,240,911. For the general fund. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you just round it up? I just rounded up to the nearest dollar to make it cleaner. 
And then I just emailed you the other one that has everything. If you could open it up, please. Eric, do y'all have any questions about this one before we move on? No. And this just summarizes the last eight pages in our packet, essentially. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the one that shows, and it's in your packet as well, that shows the increase in expenditures in certain areas. The main increases we have are from EMS fund, where we receive, we're going to receive more funding from the state, as well as three separate grant awards. So that's the increase for fund 206 that's listed up there. And then if you'd scroll down, Christine, to the next one, the capital outlay, that's where it increased about $3 million. Uh, due to all the capital outlay that we received from the state this year. But this is every fund that we have within the city. Why did fire drop so much? Uh, we had to expend a lot of money for maintenance over the year, so we didn't have as much of a rollover as we historically had. And for the preliminary budget, we don't know exactly how much we're going to get until we receive word from the state fire marshal's office. Well, at that point, we just do a budget adjustment whenever you receive your, yes, your funding. Law enforcement recruitment, is a is that a new thing? It was new, and then now it's in the second or third year, so the amount changed, and that was the guidance provided by Chief Williams for the 75000 So wasn't it 350000 I think that, so this may be the third rotation then. So we would have had a um, budget for it last year. Based on what I could see in ENCODE, I think it was all expended. Um, so I didn't have that number to go off of for the law and prepare for the recruitment one. Explain that to me if you can. The law enforcement recruitment. Mm -hmm. So I believe the first year um, we had the 300,000 that Veronica mentioned, and then it was less the second year, and then it's less again this year. Um, what I could see in ENCODE didn't give me a number to put in there uh, for last for this current fiscal year. And I don't know if the reason for that is they had so much in rollover that they didn't receive any, or I'm not sure what the justification is. I just know sure. that I could not see a number in the report that so I could. I don't think that, just for clarification mm -hmm. and transparency, mm -hmm. we probably need to change that to recruitment slash retention. Okay. Because I don't think that we recruited. I think we retained. They did recruit three. Three. But okay. I, I definitely think, and that's, this code was set up two finance directors ago. And yeah, but I think that's just a quick name change that makes it transparent that we're not just recruiting. Yeah. Because then people are going to start asking, then why do we not have more patrolmen instead of the speed cameras? You know yes. how. So it's just a little cleanup. We're going to be working with Javier next week to do a lot of that cleanup stuff and get a lot of things approved. And we can, I'll ask Christine to help me remember for us to get that corrected. Thank you. Any other questions? Chris, you have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to item C, presentation and action for a fiscal year 2023-2024 two, for third quarter budget adjustments. Um, we're going to have to delay that until we can get with Javier while he's here to figure out what all budget adjustments that we need to bring to the finance committee and then to council. Okay. So will we need to have another meeting prior to the council meeting or will that go to the it, next It'll have to be on the next one. The next council meeting. Okay. So we will table item C or postpone it. Item D, presentation and action of fiscal year 2024-2025 for preliminary budget adoption. So that's basically what we've been discussing. Does anybody have um, 
any further questions on that as to why the funds just changed? Um, I know that historically we plan for the worst, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. So we are very um, approval on what we say our revenues are going to be as opposed to what we get because we don't know GRTs and what people are going to spend or mm -hmm. if there's going to be an economy change. Yep. So um, so we always try to be uh, approval in what we say we're going to receive. Well, and it was my goal to try to set up the new finance director with the best starting point that I could with my limited capability. Okay, with the discussion that we've had, do we have a, um, what is the pleasure that we do with the preliminary, the budget? Can I ask one more question? So on like the uh, the animal shelter, 350,000 bucks for the fund 301, mm -hmm. I think we're planning on getting some funding for that, correct? So that would be a budget adjustment later. Mm -hmm. I included that in the preliminary. That's in the $5 million figure? Yes under capital so everything on the I justification for the increases the only thing that it does this. not include and it's my mistake is the right. eight million that we're going to get I'm with you. Any other questions? What is the pleasure of the Finance Committee? Move we approve the preliminary budget. I'll second. Have a motion by Mr. Elkins and a second by Mr. Self. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All, oppo All opposed, same sign? No. Motion carried. Um, next item is item E, signatures on checks must be updated May 2024. Chief Kathy. Uh, so we've been working trying to get that corrected. We've done this project, I think I counted three times. It's done as far as the bank is concerned, but we have to get it updated in in code so that the appropriate signatures are printed out the checks when we print checks. So we do have a plan and we just wanted to update y'all on that plan by next week when all the years here sit down and get the appropriate signatures uploaded into the code so that they print from the checks. And will that include our um, oncoming finance director? We'll have to add them at a later time. We do the adjustment to the banking by the prior to because four times. times. Okay, so that um, has no action item, it's just the information. And then now item F is fiscal year 25 firefighter recruitment fund. Yes, ma'am. I'm very excited to bring this just as a trying to do a buy-in from the finance committee. Uh, this the fund allows us to add personnel, which is one of our biggest needs services we provide to the community. Um, it pays for up to $65,000 per position, 100% of the year. Salary and benefits up to 65,000, 100% the first year, 50% the second year, and then 25% the final year. Um, the application is completed, goes before council on the 28th, uh, but I'm requesting for nine positions. That gets us truly staffed to what we can house today and would be very beneficial to the service that we provide. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? And that would equate to three people per ship. Is that right? Three different ships. Yeah. And then TJ, is that figure um, the same as what they are getting paid now? Or is it at a it's, higher rate? It's dependent on what insurance they select. If it's a single person, then that more than covers it. If it's a person that has a family and they get family insurance, they will be over that 65000 so you'll have to pick up that extra amount. And that's typically what a starting fire mm -hmm. might have start. It's, it's a figured at $15 an hour, which is a little bit higher than we start people at. 
uh, and based on the calculation by the DFA and the State Fire Marshal's Office, it was 65000 for a new firefighter that is on a single but it actually, because of our pay, it's a little less than it seems. But these like people already like trained? No, ma'am, this is a specifically designed to help us get people and get them trained. Part of the reporting is to ensure that they receive the proper training. Okay. Now, if we are lucky enough to hire someone with training, it's a little bit. Right. And when is this going to affect? It starts July 1. To hire people? That's when the grant goes. Starts to affect our budget. So, my goal would be to get approval from council to open up the position so that we can get a pool. That way, the first pay period in July, when it's kicked in, they're able to start work and we have a plan for a modified schedule to accelerate their training to get them ready to be on the job quicker. Could we start that training process prior to the July one? Probably not without. I would love to. Yeah, but that would be nine total, three per shift. That puts us at 11 per shift, which is still far beyond, far below the recommended response to the just the best. Well, and I know that's going to help because I'm still getting those text messages, and sometimes a call will come through, and then the next call comes in like two seconds later. Like earlier today. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, driving in, so it's still a by myself. No, no. What do we start our fire at? Forty hours. No, ma'am. We work a fifty-six hour work. So, like total is. So I'd have to look back at the pay plan, but it's roughly forty-two thousand a year. Um, I still think that an hour sixty minutes. It doesn't matter if you're driving a garbage truck or being a lifeguard at a pool. We should value their time appropriately. You have any other questions? Do you want um do we need to take action to no to move I to just, just information? Uh, the well, we appreciate you looking into the funding to try to get that department whole because I know that y'all struggle with the staffing and all the call volumes that, that come through. So we appreciate you taking the initiative to move forward with this. And I will mention that uh, we did have three positions open, well, two positions open and one's last day is tomorrow. Uh, but through the last new hiring process, we were able to make faithful staff um, with the three new hires that started later at the end of this week. Okay. Anything else on that item? Thank you. Sounds like a good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, item G, possible COLA 8515 insurance and 5% para pickup for the uh, PPD and PFD for the fire department and the and the um, police department. Mr. Kathy. Uh, so it's the one on one in general fund preliminary budget thing you see in the middle one on the top. Yes, ma'am. So I, in all my extra time, went through and tried to do a pre-calculation to give us an idea as we work to form the final budget to give you an idea of what it would cost to do these things. Um, so for a 3% COLA for the entire city, it will cost an extra $265,518.17 on top of what we preliminarily budget. Um, to, to go from a 7525 uh, for health care benefit that we provide now to an 8515, it would cost a little over 142000 And then the PERA pickup is a big cost at just over $788,000. Um, I don't think we have the revenue to justify the PERA pickup, although I think it's a good thing and a good idea that would help with retention and recruitment in both agencies. Um, given our current revenue, I don't think we can justify being able to do all three. Um, so my recommendation as the interim city manager would be us to entertain the 3% COLA and the 8515 health care, which will also help with retention and improvement and help make insurance more affordable for our staff so that less of can go without insurance. And I'll be glad to answer any questions with that. What is the 5% PERA? Uh, 
pair of pickup. So as it stands, a general employee uh, pays just over 11% for their pair. Uh, police pay about 18, 19%, and the fire pays about 19 or 20% for, this, for the PERA retirement, for the employee portion. Allowing this PERA pickup is what a lot of agencies, a lot of cities have done to help with retention and recruitment so that less money comes out of the employee's check. So they would have like an option to do a 20% or a lower percent? No, it would be 5% across the board. So for PD, it would be 16% would come out of their check and the city would pick up that extra 5% or 15% or whatever it be. And that's a requirement to pay that much? Yes. And I mean, we do have a very good retirement, but at the same time, it's very expensive for us as first responders. And I think it's a travesty that dispatches in the general plan and not in the PD plan or the plan of their own that is similar, because I think they should be on a 25 year retirement as well. But as it stands with PDRA, the two departments that it gets the hardest is fire and police. If that makes sense. Because yeah, that really takes the, the incoming firemen from like 14, 29 to 12 bucks an hour for those yes. 18, 20 year old kids. Yes. And it's honestly not the 18 to 20 year old kids that it affects as hard as it is the 25 year old father of two. Yeah. 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 In, uh, in yeah. new new employees is who it affects the most. Yes. That's a tough deal. It is. And it pays off in the long run because I've often boasted that we need to offer a different style of retirement and PERA. Because PERA is phenomenal for those of us that make it to begin to retire. There's no investment <laughs> out there that pays out like a pension does. That being said, most new employees don't care about retirement. They just get enough of paycheck. Mm -hmm. But this is a way that we can kind of bridge that gap if it's something that we could eventually afford. I think you and I talked about one time um, giving them an option to do the PERA or um, a different. That's something I'll have to visit with the next finance director about, previous finance directors. Um, I received information from them that said that because we're PERA, we can't offer it up. Okay. The city of Clovis is able to offer both because from the beginning of PERA, they offered both. But because the city of Catalyst chose to go PERA, uh, we don't have that option. But we'll have to do some further investigation. Yeah, because you know it may have changed since then. And how, what the other, like, say Albuquerque? Um, Albuquerque is all PERA, uh, but they do a substantial PERA pickup for the employees. More than that. Yes, sir. Okay. It's in the neighborhood of 7 to 10%. Yeah. And Albuquerque is offering a $15,000 per net sign-on okay. But I don't think sign-on bonuses are the best route. Um, I've had lots of talks with the fire chiefs and Let's say we started a thousand dollar sign on bonus in our neighboring department goes up to fifteen hundred. Then we go up to two thousand, we just seesaw back and forth. And I believe recruitment is important, but not as important as retention. If you handle retention, then the recruitment will take care of itself, in my opinion. Because we need to take care of those that have chose to be loyal to our community first. Any other questions on that? You need you don't need action on this one. Yep. Either. It's just information. It's just food for thought for y'all to be looking at as we form the final budget. Perfect. And then um, do you happen to know when the next finance committee will need to be held? Uh, I have to work with our years so that we can get the budget adjustment stuff figured out and then we'll reach out to the uh, Okay. Uh, when okay. is the new closing? I believe the beginning of June. June 3rd. June 3rd. TJ, I do just want to hit on this. On the 3% COLA, is that from the preliminary fiscal year 25? Because your percentages don't work. They're not enough. You're at like 2.1%. So you may just adjust those. And we'll have to, because like I said, this is new to me. What yeah. I did is I took the percentage of what we paid last year and added the 3%. Oh, okay, so this isn't based off of the preliminary budget. This is based off of actual. Yes. Okay. I'm with you. 
Okay. Item V, other business. Any matter not known about or which could not have been reasonably foreseen prior to the posting of the agenda. Do we have anything else that we need to discuss? I do have one item with the other. Yeah. No, you go first. So late yesterday evening, we were presented with an agreement by the MOU memorandum of understanding with the MOU to put the use in the editorial. So Christine, will you pull that up? It's the one document. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, she, she, she snuck out. Um, <laughs> keep in mind that this decision was made prior to me being placed as interim. Uh, but this MOU does require us to hire a manager and employees to staff their facility, as well as pay for the chemicals to utilize during the summer months. And the agreement lays it out. And again, this is not for action, just for buying because it will go before council on the 28th. Uh, and I'd be glad to try to answer any questions. I do know that we have three or four manager applicants and for sure eight lifeguards. Um, I have a hard time justifying starting a lifeguard at the point that I start the firefighter and EMT that will respond if there is a need. So I'm going to ask for guidance from the council on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what liability do you have for the city or hiring the lifeguard? Well, that's a good question. It would be the, it'd be the same as Except if we were at our own board um, and we do have the appropriate insurance oh. in place. It's basically just a different facility. It's just different. a different location. And we're uh, just doing, still doing a temp agency for the hiring. Okay. okay. Would that pool not be open if we're not using it? I would have assumed it would have for their Eastern. For Eastern. To be honest, I was under the impression they were going to take it and run with it this year. Uh, but then I reviewed the agreement and found where the employees are all responsible. And that's going to be up to council's decision. Um, on Tuesday. Hmm. Miss, what are the hours? So let me open it up so I don't have a screen. It's right there. I think. I uh, one to six, Tuesday through Sunday. Is that what yeah. that says? So hmm. in the past, we've always charged the kids coming in. And it's is a, that, it doesn't pay for itself. I understand. But, but there is a small charge. And I'm not sure how that works with this new agreement. Could we mm -hmm. find that out? If... Uh, we will. I will have that information before the council. Okay. But I have a hard time starting the lifeguard at sixteen dollars an hour. So I know that in the past, when um, when that question had came up about the pay, um, there it was looked at as they are a temporary employee who doesn't get an actual benefit package from us. So I I mean that's just food for thought too. And, and I completely understand that thought process, but what does that say to our current employees as a street slave or water labor that their hours work two dollars an hour more than the other employee. Now I, I'm not going to make that determination because I feel that I'm biased uh, based on my personal well, why is it <laughs> why is it when it is why is it 16? That's what it was paid last year. And we have eight applicants now that are previous that I guarantee you, are, <laughs> bless you, that's $16. Oh. Yes. I think it's neat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I said thank you. But he said chief. Um, so I'm going to put that for council for y'all's decision because again, I have my own personal bias that I recognize, and I don't think I need to be making that decision um, just out of respect to the service that's provided to you. Hmm. Will we get a copy of this before? Like, will it be in our agenda packet? Yes. Was it in there? It, okay. it will. It's planned into the agenda that will go out Friday, and you should have the documentation for the packet. Perfect. Yeah, Miss Danielle was very gracious to let me squeeze that in this morning. I thought the deadline was Tuesday. Just kidding. You know, if you want to delay the pool opening another two weeks, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Do we have anything from the Finance Committee? 
Chris, do you have anything? I may have missed it at the beginning of the meeting. Did we hire a finance director? And if so, can you give any information on that? Um, we did hire a finance director and she will be starting um, June 3rd. And her name is Liliana Rivera. She worked for the uh, Roosevelt County under Amber Hamilton. So she has several years of experience. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Preston, are you going to say something before that? Oh, thanks for your hard work on the short notice on the budget and everything. I so, apologize for the crudeness and this. Don't apologize. Procedure, but I had to try to make sure <laughs> I could understand. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Okay. With that, um, item six is adjournment. So we are adjourned. <laughs>